Welcome back guys, it's time for another set of slides. This time it's uh, really a quick set just to talk about the basic ideas from chapter 15. And that's mostly about what happens when you have electric fields in the presence of matter. So the short story is that uh, if you have atoms and they're uh, with electrons and nuclei, and the electrons are bound to the atoms, they're not free to roam around like in a uh, solid metal, then applying an electric field through any means, in this example you bring in a positive test charge, it, uh, it causes the electron cloud to become distorted so that the uh, positive nucleus is no longer at the center of the electron cloud. So you can see in this picture the nucleus is moved to the right, the electron cloud has stayed mostly centered on the original location, and so what we have is a charge displacement, which is called a polarization. And uh, we're going to use a simple, uh, easy to draw diagram to indicate polarization, but you should realize that it really boils down to a distortion of the charge distribution in, in matter. So let, let's take an example. Suppose we have a positive chest charge, capital Q, and a red sphere, S. Red is just there to be able to see the thing. Now what's going to happen as a result of this red sphere being stuck? This is like a plastic piece of plastic, like a maybe a size of a pea or a marble or something. What's going to happen to the charges in the red sphere? Well, the atoms of the red sphere are going to become polarized. And so the net effect is that some net positive charge is going to end up on the far side of the sphere, and a net negative charge is going to end up on the near side of the sphere. You can think that the electric field is, is uh, pulling negative charges to the left and pushing positive charges to the right, roughly, and so you end up with a polarized sphere. But once you've got a polarized sphere, now it has its own dipole field, and that dipole field exists in all the space surrounding the sphere. Now it drops off much more quickly than the uh, Coulomb field from the point charge, and so by the time you look at the field at the location of the point charge, the field is quite small, but the point charge is pretty big, and so the charge times the field, you get a reasonable force. Now we know from this, uh, what you call um, oh, dag on it. It's the uh, reciprocity um, principle that uh, the force on the charge capital Q by the dipole must also be the force on the dipole due to the charge capital Q. So if you can work out the force on the point charge, then you can get the force on the dipole as well. You know the forces have to be equal and opposite. One of the discussion questions we had in class last time was, was the field due to the point charge at the dipole equal to the field at the point charge, or let me say that again, is the field at the dipole due to the point charge equal to the field at the point charge due to the dipole? And the answer to that question is an emphatic no. Um, the, the example we worked out was a one nanocoulomb point charge um, five centimeters away from a, an object with a polarizability of, uh, what was it, two times ten to the negative nineteen in units of newton coulombs per newton per coulomb and uh, it turned out that the field at the plastic thing was 3600 newtons per coulomb and the field back at the point charge was only 0.1 newtons per coulomb so it was 36,000 times smaller anyway that gives you a flavor um, a lot of this chapter is about static charges on insulators so for example if you rub a, a plastic pen through your hair it becomes negatively charged there's a net positive charge left on your hair. On the other hand, if you have two pieces of uh, transparent tape and you pull one piece up off of the other one, you end up with a uh, charge on one and some other charge on the other. Now, whether one is positive, whether the upper one is positive or the lower one is positive is going to depend on the brand of tape and the details of the adhesive that they use. But you'll definitely have a situation where one is charged one way and the other is charged the other way. If you hang such a piece of tape from a, a support and bring your hand up to it, you'll notice that the tape is attracted to your hand. And the story goes just like the story I just told you. Essentially, there's a charge on the tape which polarizes the stuff in your finger, blood and so on, flesh. And uh, 
that polarized finger then produces a dipole field that acts back on the tape. So if we've got a liquid with free charges floating around, ions and electrons, and we apply a field, let's say we apply a field to the right, that's going to push positive ions to the right, push negative ions to the left, that's going to produce an internal field by these uh, charge uh, non-uniform charge distributions that's going to oppose the applied field. So the polarization field produced by the mobile charges in the liquid is going to point in the opposite direction of the field that moves the charges around in the first place. And in some cases, depending on how mobile these guys are exactly, you'll have a net field that's diminished from the applied field, or if it's a good conducting fluid, it'll actually uh, go to zero. In a conducting metal, you normally start with a neutral hunk of metal that has as many free electrons, which are the gray in this picture, as you have stationary nuclei bound to the crystal, which are the pluses. If I apply a field that points to the right, the sea of electrons is going to shift to the left, and excess electrons are going to pile up on the left-hand surface, and there will be a deficiency of electrons on the right-hand surface that will produce a net positive charge on the right and a net negative charge on the left. And the field produced by those charge distributions on the right and left surface is going to point in the opposite direction of the applied field. In fact, the distribution will continue to shift until the internal field goes to zero, which means that the field produced by the polarization of the uh, electron C is going to be equal and opposite in equal in magnitude but opposite in direction from the applied field giving you a net field of zero that's the idea then uh, if we talk about insulators like plastic or uh, bubble gum then uh, you have similar issues right so if I if I charge up the end of a plastic rod with wool it'll become negatively charged that will polarize the rod and the polarized rod if I bring it up to a metal ball that's neutral that dipole field from the plastic in, in addition to the point charge field from the end that was rubbed with the wool is going to produce a field at the ball that will uh, polarize the ball and the polarized ball will be attracted to the plastic rod that's the idea and in conductors, of course, we already talked about the fact that the internal field is always zero, but the internal field is always the sum of the applied field and the field produced by polarization charges, and or surface charges in this case, but the net field in internally is always going to end up to be zero. So if you touch a metal rod with a charged object, the chart, the uh, the net charge is going to distribute itself around the surface of the rod until the internal field is zero. But uh, if you bring a metal ball up to that metal rod, it'll be attracted for the same reason that it was attracted to the plastic rod. And uh, that's, that's basically how it works. So you end up with a picture that looks something like that. So we'll be drawing pictures like this and playing with tape and rods and stuff. It's going to be great fun. So we'll see you guys in class.